Welcome back to Learn As You Explore for yet another MBOT2 tutorial. In the last video, we learned how to build a block program to help the MBOT2 robot avoid obstacles and tested it out on our robot. In this tutorial, we will develop a block program for the Night Patrol robot project. In this project, the robot senses that the room has become dark and starts driving straight until it becomes bright again. Let's get into it. Let's go to the mblock code editor by going to ide.mblock.cc. First, let's add the mbot2 robot to our devices. Click on add right here. Select the mbot2 robot and click OK. Now let's add an event so we can control when the program starts running on the robot. As in the previous projects, we will use button B, the triangular button on the CyberPy, to do this. Let's go to the events block category and use the when button A pressed block, but we'll change this to button B instead. Once button B is pressed, we want the program to repeat until we do something. In this case, press another button. In the control block category, there is a block that does exactly this, and it is called repeat until. So let's click this and drag it on to our workspace. In this case, we want to repeat the program until a button is pressed, so we can stop the robot driving once we press that button. Since we use button B to control the start of the program, let's use button A to stop the program. If we look into the sensing block category, we see one such conditional block that says button A pressed. Let's drag this and drop it into the repeat until block condition. Now let's think about what we want the robot to do. We want the robot to sense the amount of light in its surroundings. This is also known as ambient light. If the amount of ambient light goes down below a certain level, we want the robot to start driving forward. Otherwise, we want the robot to remain still, that is, both its wheels must be stopped. Additionally, since we want the robot to not keep running after the program has been stopped with button A, we also want to stop the motors before the program ends. This will be our objective, and I'll keep it on the screen here until we are done with our program, since it will be a good reference for us as we build out the program. Doing something if a condition is met and doing something else if the condition is not met is exactly the definition of the if-then-else block. We can find this block in the control block category right here. Click and drag the block to be within the repeat until block. Next, let's define the condition that we want. From our objective, we see that we want to keep driving forward when the robot detects low ambient light. We can help the robot sense the amount of ambient light using a sensor called the ambient light intensity sensor. On our MBOT2 robot, this sensor is on the CyberPy and is exposed to the ambient light using one of the small holes on the top right of the joystick on the CyberPy. The small hole on the left is the light sensor while the small hole on the right is the microphone. Let's use the ambient light intensity sensor to detect if it is dark, and in that case, we can make the robot drive forward. We now have to define what dark is with respect to the ambient light sensor. For this project, we'll define dark to be any light value reported under two. You can tweak this number. If your room is not very dark when the lights are off, you can increase this number. Let's update our objective to reflect this definition of dark. Okay, so now we want to do two things. First, get the amount of ambient light sensed by the sensor. And second, check if the amount of ambient light sensed is less than two. Now, I want to mention something that is good to build your knowledge, but is not directly related to building this program. If you're in a rush to continue building the program, feel free to skip the next few seconds, but I would recommend listening to it. 
Unlike the ultrasonic sensor, which provides distance measurements in centimeters, which is a standard measure of distance, note that there are no real units for the ambient light intensity sensed, since it is relative and is not on an absolute scale. This means that you can expect the ambient light sensor to read a higher value when there's more light and a lower value when there's less light, but you cannot expect it to give you the exact amount of ambient light in any standard measure of light, like lux. There's more to what lux exactly is, but to stay on topic, all you need to know for now is that it is a standard unit used to measure ambient light intensity. Now let's get back to building our program. We are going to effectively do a comparison operation as the condition for this if then else block. Let's go to the operators block category to find a less than comparison operator block. This block is the one that we want. It checks if a value that we define is less than another value, again, that we can define. In our case, we want the first value to be the ambient light intensity measurement from the sensor, and the second value to be the value two. Let's click and drag this block and insert it within the if block. Since we want the first value within the less than operator block to be the ambient light intensity measurement, let's head to the CyberPice sensing block category and use this block right here that gives us the ambient light intensity measurement. Click and drag it inside the less than operator's first sub block. Since we want to compare this ambient light measurement to a fixed value of two, we can directly type that in in the second sub block. So we change this 50 to two. You're doing absolutely great so far. We have the entire structure of the program done now. Let's do a quick review. When button B is pressed, we want to start the program and keep it repeating until button A is pressed. This will stop the program. If the ambient light sensor measurement reads less than two, we will do something. Otherwise, we will do something else. Perfect. Now let's instruct our robot to drive forward within the if block and instruct it to stop its motors otherwise. Head on over to the MBOT2 chassis block category and we see the moves forward at some RPM block. This means that the robot will continue to move forward at the specified speed. Remember, RPM is revolutions per minute and is a measure of wheel speed. Let's drag this block into our if block. I found that 50 RPM is a bit too fast for me, so I'm gonna reduce this down to 25 RPM. The else part here is to instruct what the robot should do when the room is not dark or the ambient light measurement is greater than or equal to two. In this case, our objective says that the robot should stop driving and stay still. Let's go back to the MBOT chassis block category and we see the stop encoder motor all block. This will help stop the robot's wheels. So let's click and drag this into our else block. Finally, just like in our obstacle avoidance project, when we stop the program by pressing button A, we want to command one last stop to the wheels so that the robot does not continue driving after the program has ended. For this, we will add another stop encoder motor all block from the MBOT2 chassis block category at the very end, right after the repeat until block has completed. Awesome work. We now have our complete program and we're ready to test it on the robot. Make sure that the robot is powered on and is connected to your computer with the USB cable. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll add a link in the description to the exact timestamp from one of my previous videos where I show you how to do that. Once your robot is powered on and connected to your computer using the USB cable, click on Upload and then click on Serial. Select the USB serial device and click Connect. Great, your robot is now connected. Click on Upload Code. Wait for the upload to complete. And great, your code has now been uploaded. 
you can now unplug the USB cable from the robot. Great, let's head on over to the robot and see our program in action. For the setup, I have a light source here to control the ambient light near the robot. You can use your room's light if that is bright enough, but I've found that a brighter source of light, like your phone's flashlight, works best. Make sure that your light source is powered on and facing the robot. Also make sure that any other lights in your room are turned off and there isn't a lot of light coming into the room from a nearby window. We will keep the program on the side and throughout the test, I will point to the section of the program being executed. This will give you a nice visual understanding of the program. We are going to start our program by pressing button B. We see the robot stay still when the lights are on. As soon as the lights are turned off, the robot starts patrolling, driving forward continuously until the lights are turned back on. We can test this multiple times to make sure that our program works as expected. Let's stop the robot by pressing the square A button. Congratulations, that was fun, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed learning about the ambient light sensor and building a neat little project that you can show off to your family and friends. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.